Today on the Locked On NFL Podcast, we're going to talk about the winners and losers of the NFL Draft. Chris Carter, James Rapine, it's the Wednesday episode. Let's get into it. You are Locked On NFL, your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to the Locked On NFL Podcast. We're your hosts, Chris Carter and James Rapine, here on the Wednesday episode of the Locked On NFL Podcast. As you can get on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube, like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to this channel to get all of our daily Monday through Friday episodes with all the different hosts throughout the week. As, as always, when you check out this show, remember that we are sponsored by Game Time. Game Time is the app you need to download today to get tickets to your favorite events. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. James, the NFL draft's done, and so we're going to talk about that for, for a bit here on this channel. And I guess we could do a winners and losers thing because we want to talk about who came out of this on, on the positive side. Um, and I think there's a lot of teams that you could say did well in the draft, at least post-draft. I, I always want to preface this with, with this. When we talk about grades, winners and losers. These are per- just particularly off how we all evaluated the draft going into it. It does not mean – this draft class will absolutely be the best and the greatest of all time. It just means, hey, and looking at where we ranked guys personally, this is where we see these teams now that the draft is complete. Yeah, exactly. And it is a valuable tool I because I, I see so many people like with the draft grade saying, ah, they're useless. Call me in three years. Well, the reason it's valuable is you can actually look back and remember how you evaluated that draft, why you said the things you said, having it on paper or on video or recorded somewhere. So the guys that work out, the guys that don't work out, maybe you can learn from it. So it is part of the the fun uh, of it. And I, I think that that's what's interesting when people get all frustrated with grades. It's actually good to, re- to have some kind of notation of how you felt in the moment and how I feel in the moment. And let's start with a winner, Chris, because we're positive and we're going to start with the winners here. Mm-hmm. They weren't drafted number one. But the tree, the team that was drafting number two came out number one. The Washington Commanders absolutely mm. crushed the draft. And it's not just names you know. It's this uh, just a bunch of high-end talent. Obviously, we know they took Jaden Daniels with the second overall pick. They move up. They get Johnny Newton out of Illinois in round two. They get Mike Sanristrill, uh, or Sanristill out of Michigan, the the nickel cornerback who I think is going to make an impact right away. Ben Sinnott, the tight end out of Kansas State. Oh, man, another weapon for their rookie quarterback. That makes a ton of sense. Brandon Coleman, offensive line. I think he'll move inside but play tackle at TCU. Luke McCaffrey out of Rice. That's day one and day two. All of those guys might be able to contribute in a big way right away. I love what they did now. They're all top 100 picks. McCaffrey was pick 100, but man, I think they got great value with Newton. Uh, San Rastill was someone that I think was getting some late first round buzz at at the time, and he went pick 50. Ben Sinnott is one of the best tight ends in the draft, so I think they they nailed this one. Yeah, I I liked. I mean, the fact Johnny Newton, when Jerry Longley was sitting there in the top of the second round, I was like, he's not going to be there long. So when they were able to get him, that was a big score there. You get your franchise quarterback. You know, you get Mike Sanders still. Who I had him ranked right around fifty. He was like right around my top fifty in my big board there. Um, Brandon Coleman, a decent offensive tackle. Luke McCaffrey, I think, could end up being a steal. Ran great, has great routes. I, I think that he could be a difference maker. So I'm with you there. The Commanders certainly are a winner there, um, but. I think we, we should get the chalk answer out the way. I do think the Bears can say that they won this draft as well because uh, when you look at the fact that they got Caleb Williams and granted they didn't have to do anything other than just be, you know, just get that pick in the first place, um, I, I think they certainly certainly ha- have been put in a good situation. But now you got him and Roma Dunze. So, like, mm-hmm. you get the number one quarterback, a top three wide receiver. Some even said that maybe a top two wide receiver in this draft class. Um, I, I think you score there, but but also when you get the tackle out of Yale, Yale uh, Karun Amag- Amagaji, I think I pronounced that correctly. I hope I did. Um, 
but that that's a guy who some people saw as like one of your pro- top options as a day two tackle who could develop into a starter quicker uh, for your for your team. So you get a premium position at tackle, a premium position at wide receiver, and the premium position at, at quarterback and the premium pick at quarterback. Um, I, I think that they they did their jobs, and you can look at some of their other picks as well. You know, Tory Taylor, whatever. You know, you got a punter in the fourth round, but Tory Taylor. All, all Iowa did was punt. Some people said he, they were he, he, he was Iowa's best offensive player. Um, but uh, I'll, if you just take those three first three picks alone for what Chicago had to do in their rebuild, I, I can certainly say you can say that they won with those three picks. No doubt about it. They, they were high on my list, and it's natural to say, "Oh well, they're picking number one. They got the best player." But then Roma Dunze just falls to them. Falls yep. in the map at nine, and man. I, I tweeted it out on draft night. The Bears are having a good night. And, of course, I cover the Bengals daily. Everyone's like, yeah, they had two picks in the top nine. And it's like, yeah, but how many times do you get the stud quarterback and then the stud receiver is still sitting there? Just a, a really fun draft. And they have other weapons. They have DJ Moore. They have Keenan Allen. They have a really good tight end. And so you're able to get a, a quality offensive lineman that will at least be a, a higher-end backup. And, uh, yeah, they, they're – in good shape. I, I liked what they did, quality over quantity. And you're right, Amagaji is, is how mm-hmm. you say his name. And uh, shout out to Dane Brugler and the Beast for helping me pronounce names yeah. throughout the draft that I uh, wasn't sure about. But no, I, I think Karan is certainly someone that could end up starting for them down the line. But those first two picks, those can be foundation setters. And you look at this Bears team, where they're at. They might compete for the playoffs right now. They might be ready to go right now. If Caleb Williams is that dude, there's a lot of weapons around him. And weapons, quality quarterback, not the best division in the world. It's not a weak division, but it's not the best division in the world. I, I think that there's there's no slouch now in that NFC North. And who knows? Maybe the Vikings are, are fourth now in the North, which... Again, I don't think they're a slouch. I think they're pretty darn good, but that's kind of crazy to think about if they're the fourth team in the North. Absolutely. Who's another winner for you? Yeah, lo- looking here, I, there's a, a couple teams that stand out the most. To me, oh, I was going to get to a loser, but uh, one of the teams that uh, that stands out, and they always do this, is the Baltimore Ravens. Mm. And, and, and here's why. It's not even all their picks, but three stand out. The fact that you get Nate Wiggins at 30, I think he's such a sticky cover corner. Obviously, great speed. He's smaller, but my goodness, that's pretty good value. I think he was a top 25 guy or so. But the real value is in round two. Roger Rosengarden going 62 overall. I thought he was going to go top 40. Mm. I didn't think some of these tackles were going to fall as far as, as some projected. And so for him to be there at 42 and then... My third favorite pick, not only did they get Nate Wiggins, but they also get TJ Tampa in round four. That was really good value. A lot of people had him going top 100 and and usually top 80. Mm -hmm. And so those are the three picks that really stood out to me. And they usually do that. They have a few picks that really stand out that those those were three that where I was like, all right. Now they added Vontez Walker. They added uh, Adisa Isaac as well, like the other guys. But. Those are the three that stood out from the Ravens, and and they always seem to land a guy or two with great value. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think Nate Wiggins was great value at 30. Um, Adisa Isaac was a guy some people were saying should have been higher at the edge position. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people looked at Chop Robinson, his teammate out of Penn State. Um, but TJ Tampa, great value at one at 130. Devontae Walker, I felt like he went where he was supposed to go. So that, that's solid if he develops into uh, you know, a secondary option for the in the receiving core. They needed that. Um, so I did like them. Another winner who uh, is kind of rivals, well, in a weird way with the Ravens, the Indianapolis Colts, because, you know, Uh (laughs) the Colts took away, uh, the Indianapolis took away the Colts from Baltimore. There's always that old, that old rivalry. But way to to remind them. I was trying to look past it. You remind (laughs) everyone. (laughs) But I I like what the Colts did here. Um, I did too. Like to lot to getting him. In the 15th overall, didn't have to move at all for him. They just said, "Hey, we'll take that in our, on our hands." You get a you get a top edge rusher there, and then getting Adonai Mitchell at, at 52 in the mm-hmm. second round, not having to move up and still get in my book. Adonai Mitchell was one of the top receivers. He was a top five receiver in this draft class, and for some reason he fell. And I'm like, okay, 
I, I guess I guess people people don't see what I see, but I, I think that dude can be a future number one wide receiver. You pair him with Michael Pittman. You got Anthony Richardson coming back. Hello, you're gonna. I think that offense has a lot going for it there. But Matt Gonsalves, a guy that I covered at the University of Pittsburgh, he's a th- he's a third round pick. Great value there because Gonsalves can play right tackle, left tackle, right guard, left guard. He did all four at Pitt. Um, and he has the size to be a left tackle in the NFL. Mm. Um, I, you know, he got injured this year, and so he didn't he didn't get to really test at the combine. And then uh, at his pro day, he only basically had two weeks before his pro day to really train because he was coming off a of surgery. Uh, and he didn't test great, so his relative at low score wasn't like super high or anything. But I, when I was talking to scouts and people that that, that kind of like were looking at him, they were like, "Oh no, no, no! He did enough to." be who he was and so getting him in the third round was solid and then even Tanner Bordellini who was one of the more yes. underrated uh centers in this in this draft class out of, out of Wisconsin I thought all of those were important picks for this Colt teams for this Colt team um the the you know Bordellini can can develop into into a starter at center Gonzalez can develop into a starter anywhere in your offensive line outside of center and then Mitchell a key position at wide receiver and Latu at a key position at edge I, I think the Colts sneakily had one of the best drafts of, of this year they did. There's no doubt about it. Those first four picks are awesome. I love Bordellini. Elite athlete, moves well, mm-hmm. I think can play guard or center if you need him to. Obviously projects to be a center long term. Ryan Kelly's getting up there. He's Cincinnati native, by the way, Ryan Kelly is. So Tanner Bordellini can be your center of the future. And to get Adonai Mitchell, to add weapons after going with the edge rusher at 15 and add one of the best receivers in the draft, it's just great value. It's just great value. So Really like what the Colts did. I, I think they'd be high on my winner board. Uh, another winner in this team doesn't usually win drafts. But in, in, again, you, you'll see a theme here. The more early picks you have, the more it's easy to, to declare them winners, at least in my book. But Arizona, hmm. I think, had hits all over their board. And uh, it's a team I really like. So we can get to them, but first... Uh, we will get and we will get to more winners, but first let's take a time out here on Locked On NFL. What reminds you this show is also brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home the winning trophy, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time for your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices that you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. We're also brought to you by... Game time. Game time is the app that uh, uh game time is the app that you need to download right to, right today to get your to get your favorite tickets to your favorite events without it being a stressful event, and that includes the NBA the NBA playoffs right now, which are go which are going wild. If you saw some of those first round games, I can't wait to see the Nuggets and the Timberwolves throw down Jokic and Murray, Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns. It's gonna be huge. Game time is gonna be the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events. Near, near near you so download game time game time today on your phone they also have a best price guarantee that can't be beat if you find tickets in the same section of row for less somewhere else game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game to map create an account and use code locked on nfl for 20 dollars off your first purchase or go to the website gametime.co terms of this apply create an account redeem code locked on nfl for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed All right, Chris, let's get to some more winners here before we pivot to some losers. And the Arizona Cardinals, to me, big, big winners in the 2024 NFL draft. Not only do they get the top wide receiver, Marvin Harrison Jr., they get a top edge rusher in Darius Robinson. Then they come back and they get a cornerback that I really like in Max Melton. And then they get, for my money, the top running back in this draft. I know that will be debated with Jonathan Brooks, but Trey Benson, love his game. And then it's peppered with value guys that I like 
like Tip Raymond, they might have taken him a bit early, but he's going to help them, especially in the running game right away at tight end. Then Xavier Thomas in round five, Christian Jones out of Texas, late round five. Those are two picks I really like. So overall, they had picks early, and I think they had a lot of hits early. I wouldn't have reached on Raymond. I think that was a bit early in round three, but I still like the player. I think he can help them, and I certainly think Harrison Robinson, Melton Benson, all of those guys are going to contribute right away. Certainly. I, I think the, the Ravens are a team. They, they know how to work their front office. They know they know what the deal is there. Uh, or the Cardinals, too. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, let's get to some losers here, though, because we've been, yeah. we've been really positive about this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take the chalk loser answer right now, and that's that's the Atlanta Falcons because, uh, man, I got to say, taking Penix. Like, look, the, maybe yeah. Penix turns out to be, to be that guy, but you had a chance at number eight to get Latu – to get mm -hmm. one of those, you know, to get one of those top receivers, they, they let Roman Dunes they fall. They like, like, mm -hmm. like, 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 like he, they're one of the teams to let him fall to the Bears at nine. Uh, and you get Penix. Uh, personally, I also didn't value Penix in the first round, nor Knicks. And we can get to the Broncos at some point. Uh, but when I when I looked at that, I was like, man. I mean, I, I'm kind of with everybody. You just paid Kirk Cousins all that money, and it'd be one thing if Michael Penix was coming out at 20 years old and like, dude had forever to develop, and he was super. He was a super young. But the fact that he is older and now you're going to tell him to probably ride the bench for a few years, that's a that's a tough pill to swallow for a franchise that's trying to rebuild right now. And, you know, it, I, I thought the funny thing was someone showed the clip of the GM talking to the owner uh, for the mm -hmm. Falcons after after the pick was made. And you saw like a lot of hand movements and trying to explain stuff. And they're like, that's what you're doing when you're trying to explain how, or something to your boss and your boss is not happy. And so that was uh that was certainly a move there. I do like Rook Ororo. I think that he could be a good defensive lineman, but man, I think the Falcons needed to come away with uh, a lot of stuff here and Penix really kind of hurt them at the top of this at the top of this draft list. Sure, and they took Rook ahead of Johnny Newton. Yeah. Like I didn't even think about that like, part. Like even that. the guy that they took, it's like what are you doing? Like what yeah. are you doing? Atlanta, what are you doing? What yeah, are you It was a Just wild move one. down. If you love Penix, move down because mm -hmm. he was going to be there. The Vikings exactly. and Broncos were taking those guys. Like maybe he goes 13 to the, the Raiders. Maybe. Maybe. But my goodness, it, you know, I, I if I was them, I would have tried to move down at least to 10 with the Jets. And I, I would have tried to get uh, because they, they may have been willing to move up uh, to, to get uh, the, the receiver from Washington. So I, I do. I think it's it's interesting to see them go this route and go quarterback and it's going to be a storyline and maybe it pays out or you know it pans out but man is it risky and it's it's very risky i just ugh, i i don't like it it doesn't feel great uh, another loser and i know they needed weapons and i know they needed to add pieces around bryce young and i just mentioned jonathan brooks is maybe the best running back in the draft but for the carolina panthers to trade up yeah, for Xavier Leggett, and I know he's exciting, and I know he he he's from there, and all those things. Like I get it, the ties, it feels good. Come on, yeah. man. I, I I had him as a as a as a mid to high second round guy, but not a Ad first Mitchell guy. went twenty two picks later, exactly. twenty two, and you moved up for Xavier Leggett. I I just think yeah. one year of production. I think it's just a real risk, and in of all these guys like Jatavian Sanders, I don't mind him in round four. But he's not a guarantee by any stretch. And Leggett is a roll of the dice. And Jonathan Brooks is coming off of the ACL. It's just there's a lot of question marks here. And so Dave Canales, good luck because the the Panthers, they were already in in a, a hole, so to speak. And so we'll see if they can dig themselves out of it. Another team I I, I wasn't really sold on. I'm not sure these guys are complete losers here in this draft class. I just I didn't like the way that they, they they went about it. It's the Buffalo Bills. You just lost what Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs. You mm -hmm. had the, you had a pick in the first round, mm -hmm. and you traded back, and then you took Keon Coleman out of Florida State. I like Keon Coleman, but I didn't like him over Adonai Mitchell. I don't mm -hmm. think that he and, and I could be completely off here, but I don't think he's the future number one for that team. And you needed to get Josh Allen some serious weapons in this draft class, and I, they did, I don't think they did that. And then behind him, you get Cole Bishop, you know, decent safety. But is that what you really needed for this team right now? That team needed a center with Mitch Morse's, you know, you know, situation. They waited all the way to the fifth round and got Cedric Van Pran. And listen, I like Cedric Van Pran, but 
not as a plug and play starter. I thought maybe like that was the guy you were settling for, which is what the Steelers were, were worried about in their draft class was how are they going to get a center if they get a premier tackle? They ended up with Zach Frazier who was one of my top 30 players in this draft class. So, um, you know, I, I think that, that the Buffalo Bills, they needed a center. They got one super late. Um, mm-hmm. They needed a top playmaking wide receiver. I think they got a guy that was in the third tier of wide receivers, maybe even fourth tier of wide receivers. I'd say third tier of wide receivers for my draft class. But um, I, I felt like the Bills needed to do more in this draft class. And I don't think this is that this class particularly is going to help them win now with Josh Allen. Yeah, I get it. I do. And, and we'll see. They need Keon Coleman to be a hit right away. I have another loser for you, and it's going to make a lot of you either angry or sad. Uh-oh. We will get to that coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by Monopoly Go and Game Off. We got to pause to tell you more about Monopoly Go. And I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that. But there's so much good stuff in Monopoly Go. You could team up with friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. There's so much to get from unique stickers that you can trade to complete albums for big prizes, hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constant changing tournaments and challenges, a ton of different mini games and digging for treasure or a robot pachinko machine. My goodness, there's always new timed events and you can win big and with massive multipliers and so much more. So there's always something fun to discover a monopoly. Go get off the bench and go download it now for free on Google play or the app store game on. Let's get back to some, uh, some, uh, some of the teams that made the biggest progress or didn't take a leap at all. I want to go one more loser here. And it's a team that you and I talk about a lot because we have mm-hmm. to, I think the Cleveland Browns are 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 in a world of trouble. Wow! Listen, I liked Michael Hall uh, as a as wow a in this class, but not in the second round. I thought he was a third round pick at best. And this is this is a Browns team that like you know they traded away all their picks to get Deshaun Watson years ago, and so now they're kind of dealing with that. They didn't have a first round pick, but this second round pick they had they had some opportunities to to go in, go get a guy. It was going to be a a difference maker. And to me, Michael Hall Jr. was a guy you probably could have waited till the third round and got. And then third round, you get you get Zach Zinter, the guard out of Michigan. Again, decent player, but uh, I just I valued quite a few players over those guys. And to me, I just felt like you you didn't have a first round pick. You got guys who above the value. Like I had Michael Hall Jr. as my 75th best player. Uh, they picked him 54th overall. Zach Zinter wasn't even in my top 100. Uh, they got him 85th. Um, so I, I, I looked at that and I said, man, like that's, that's a hard sell for me. And this is back to back years where I'm not really impressed by the Browns draft class. I, I think that this team, they, they're going to need the dudes that have been carrying this team to, you know, getting, getting in, just getting into the playoffs, uh, to keep carrying them because I don't see a lot of young talent rising up for this team and making a difference soon. They just re-signed or got a fifth year extension for, for Greg Newsom. They're going to need everybody who's been a veteran for the team to somehow improve a lot um, because I don't see a lot of rookie help or even last year's rookies helping to make a big difference for for this upcoming year for the Browns. Yeah, one more loser and then a couple other teams I just want to spotlight before we get out of here. The Dallas Cowboys. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, How would I forget them? Uh, The Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, they probably should have been the first loser. And I love the Cooper BB pick. He was your third rounder. Why are yeah. we talking about the third round as your best pick? Yeah, that that's it, it's tough. You know, I, I think the Tyler Guyton pick on the surface it makes sense because he has the measurables. He played tight end a few years ago, Chris. Yeah, he's he's a project. Yeah, it's going to take some time for Tyler mm-hmm. Guyton. And I just I, I look at that and I'm like, man, they could have gotten something much more impactful, and they didn't. And they don't get a running back in this draft, and it leads to them reuniting with Zeke Elliott as well. It's just like, oh, bad to yeah. worse, I, you know. Yeah. I, I so I that's what stands out. Now, could BB be really good? Yeah, I think he could be good. Heck, Guyton may end up being good, but I just think it's a, a huge risk. Uh, Marshall Neeland is is someone that I, I I like as a player out of Western Michigan, the edge rusher. But man, it just 
seems risky and your draft also re- has you reuniting with Zeke. It just doesn't make a, a lot of sense to me, especially because they didn't get another weapon either I, I, until what the sixth round when they took the Southeast right. Missouri state receiver. Like it's, it's kind of a rough draft class. I would say, especially when you bring up, you know, Guyton's going to take some time to adjust to the NFL. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure he's a plug and play guy. I'm not sure if this, if this Cowboys team gets better right now. And this, this is a Cowboys team with the way that it's constructed. They need to win soon because more and more guys are going to become more expensive. And uh, this core, I don't think, has much longer to stick together. And this draft class does not help this core win right now. And I think that's where uh, that's where they, I, I'm right with you, the Cowboys. Like, look, long-term, Guyton may work out and become a, a great tackle for you. And and, and uh, But I think that he, he was one of my guys I had you know, graded a little bit later. He was past the second, and maybe he's like in the third tier of offensive tackles this year, and you get him in the first round. I just mm-hmm. – I, I felt like that was a. I felt like they missed the boat here on a few things, and they even traded back to try to get you know try to get, try to get extra picks. And I don't think they did enough work with the extra picks that they got to uh, to make up for that. So that being said, you know we're talking about winners and losers. Is there a team that you feel like James who improved this year? Like mm-hmm. like just with with the picks that they got, they're going to be a significantly better team because some of the guys they got are going to be early contributors. Yeah, I mean the Philadelphia Eagles, mm. insane. Yeah. The fact that they get the top corner in the draft, Quinion Mitchell, and then they get the other top corner in the draft. If you didn't have it as Quinion Mitchell and Cooper DeGene, yep, they needed safety help, they needed secondary help, and they got it with two guys that I think are instant contributors. I also really like Will Shipley out of Clemson. Yep. Makes a ton of sense. Uh, they view Johnny Wilson as a receiver. He fell to round six, certainly. Uh, like that hall and then one more team and it they get picked on a lot but i like the new york jets and what they did okay olu fashionu they don't go brock pick. bowers they, they go with fashionu and then they don't have a second rounder and in the third round they get the receiver version of bowers and what mm-hmm. i mean by that is a guy you can put in the slot and he's going to give you good yak good yards after catch and that's malachi corley yeah and then they get one of the youngest players in the draft in braylon allen who I, I like a lot at running back. And so those three picks wouldn't shock me. I mean, it's one, it's insurance for Brees Hall. It's insurance for your old tackles. But you also get a guy in, in Malachi Corley who I think can make an impact right away. I like those picks there. I think that the Jets certainly improved sooner rather than later. I think one team that was right on the cusp last year, that got to help at a key position, particularly because of uh, some things that have happened in the offseason, is the Detroit Lions mm. because mm. their secondary needed help anyways, and then they lost Cameron Sutton because you know he got in trouble with the law and they had to let him go. Uh, we'll see how that goes out. He, I believe, he had a hearing yesterday, uh, uh, preliminary hearing. So we'll see actually how that goes. I know his charges have been reduced. We'll see what you know if he if he makes his way back to the NFL. But even if he does it, the Detroit Lions let him go. They needed to find help at the cornerback position. And they went and got it. They got Terry on Arnold at 24. Amazing value, in my opinion. Terry on Arnold was a top like 12 player on my on my big board. So amazing value there. And then you go and get Ennis Rakestraw Jr. at 61st overall. Um, you got two of my a guy from the top tier of cornerbacks and a guy in like the second tier of cornerbacks in my draft class this year at a key position of need. That to me alone was a big win for them. And then you get Manu uh you know, the University of British Columbia, they're in the fourth mm-hmm. round of tackle. But it, you got decent, like, day three picks there. But to me, it stands out that they re- this team was very close and needed big help at the cornerback position, and they're getting a double dose of big help, much like the Eagles are with, the, with their secondary. So two NFC teams that I think improved right away by attacking the secondary. And it, I think it was actually a good secondary class but because this was also a highly picked quarterback class, a highly picked tackle class, a highly picked wide receiver class. We, we talked going into last week, James, some one group of players had to fall. Uh, you know, uh, and because and not all the t- not all the positions could just be highly drafted because event there's only so many draft picks to go around. It was cornerbacks that fell, and I think both the Eagles and Lions were the biggest beneficiaries of that happening. Yeah, that's a good point. One more team that I want to mention. Who and it's because of the first four picks just popping, and they were top 100 picks, and so you should get those right. But Troy Fautanu, Zach Fraser, Woman Wilson, that's a hell of a trio that you just added to the Steelers' offense, and I'm yeah. not just saying it because you're here. And then you get a guy in Peyton Wilson who was there's some people's top linebacker in this draft. He was mine. And so you, you get all of that 
in, in the first three rounds, a, a lot of value there. And so I, I think all four of those guys will either start or contribute right away. And man, linebacker, what linebacker issues you got Peyton Wilson and Patrick Queen in the, the Steel City. I mean, that's pretty good. That's pretty darn good there. Listen, I, I got to say this too. And I, I stayed away from talking about the Steelers in this one because people hear me talk about the Steelers all the time on Locked On Steelers. But mm-hmm. Valtanu was one of my, was my, one of my top tackles in this draft class. Um, the Steelers went and got him. And the question was if they got a top tackle, could they get a, could they get a, one of those plug and play top three centers in this draft class? Cause if they didn't, they were going to need some serious help because center was a big need. They got Zach Frazier, who, from what I heard and what I understood, he was their guy day two. Like they had, they had no other plan other than to get Zach Frazier and then, and then deal with the rest of it after that. Uh, Omar Khan, the GM last year, traded up to get Broderick Jones, was moving all around the place, you know, traded down in the third round, still got Darnell Washington to, to get an extra pick for that turned out to be uh, uh, Nick Herbig. But this year he stands pat, gets gets all the targets that, that that they're looking for tackle center wide receiver linebacker and then even mason mccormick in the fourth round uh, a guard out of south dakota state who t- tested amazingly well and now he doesn't have to start this year because they got james daniels and isaac sayamalu but now he could develop into your future guard starter when one of those guys can't afford to be paid or is just done with the done with the steelers so yeah i'm, I'm with you. I, I think the steelers are uh, like Falton who's starting this year, Zach Frazier starting this year, Roman Wilson's going to get significant time. And from what I'm hearing, they're in the trade market right now to get a big name wide receiver. So it's going to be X player that's out that's out there in the trade market with George Pickens mm-hmm. and Roman Wilson. Uh, I think that they're uh, it's going to be a very interesting picture for what the Steelers are next year. I think their offense is going to be completely different. And we haven't even mentioned the quarterback room. So certainly the Steelers at, added there. But I think this was an interesting draft class with a lot of high, uh, you know, high positions of value, having lots of high picks in them. Like we talked about corner tackle quarterback wide receiver. When those four positions are the one that you're talking about the most, that's a very yep. good sign that teams are getting prime important positions early, and that can sometimes lead to rising and falling of team of teams. You know their their abilities to play the next season, which I'm going to be really intrigued to see who improves the most. No doubt about it. We are going to have you covered all off season long right here on Locked On NFL. So subscribe on YouTube, follow wherever you get your podcast, and for Chris Carter. I'm James Rapine. Thank you so much for listening to the Locked On NFL Podcast.